Hey, I'm Desi Williams. I'm here on the Zach Nichols Podcast. We're talking all about the challenge and more, so tune in. Welcome back to the Zach Nichols Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Zach Nichols. It never changes. <laughs> it's the best part. And it never gets old. But the good news is, is we have our very first challenge champion in the house today, wow. Miss Desiree Williams. I'm like honored. I didn't know I was your first. You are our first, <laughs> and there couldn't be a better representative. Real quick. Zach is looking confused. Like Why? he disagrees. With I was him. just thinking, no, I was just thinking we have champ we've had champions here, but not a challenge champion here. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you are. That's right. Challenge we had right. Uh, so, uh, Michelle. Besides me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now that's what I'm saying. Now we got like go five, besides the guy who's always here, but happens to be the yeah. co-host, <laughs> the namesake of the podcast. But I, my win was like what 11, 12 years ago, and yours was like 11, 12 weeks ago. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. But but it's a true goat conversation. You got the greatest of her time, literally, and one of the greatest of his time. And we're really excited to to have you on. Now, the first thing I like to do is I like to give out some flowers. So we just got to talk about some accolades. So I don't know if you know you're you're okay with me talking about you a little bit. Yeah, yeah. My bouquet is ready. Chan Challenge USA 2 champion, also a Challenge USA 1 finalist. You've never done a challenge without making a final. Let's just say that. I didn't know people quick. did that. No, oh, I'm, yeah. kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> We do. We do. We we've, do. We've had that a couple. A we've had a couple people here that haven't made a final yet. So yeah. yeah so if yeah. you ever had to go home before the final, you'd probably be like, "What the heck? I feel like it wasn't even on the show." Yeah, literally. Right. Um, you're Miss Virginia 2016, 15, and 13. Am I missing a year? Um, so that's a little confused, but yeah, I was Miss Virginia 2013, okay. Miss Virginia USA 2016. Oh, Miss Virginia USA 2016, yeah, so that's just like a step up. They're like two separate titles. Got you, it got you. on who you ask. So you're a pageant champ, though, for sure. And uh, National Sweetheart 2012 and Miss Hampton uh, University 2011, all from a Google search, but wow, you're a pageant queen. He got all, yeah, I like that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we're not done, though. Okay. Because right. you are a published author as well. Okay, what? yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you're a doctor? I also have a doctor's degree. This Physical is therapy. Yeah, DPT, yeah. That's what that says. Yeah, okay. DPT. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Didn't big, want to make any assumptions. No, that's a big deal. And also, you were a working actor as well. I mean, you know, I book things from time to time. Oh, a round of applause for Miss <laughs> Desiree Williams, please. Do you practice physical therapy anymore? So I actually own a business. I own a home health agency and a mm -hmm. mobile PTOT company. Got it. So if there's not a therapist who can do the visit, I will. Stand in and do a visit. Like, oh shit! Imagine a challenge fan answering the door. I know, I know. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Most of these people have no idea who I am. Thank God, HIPAA is a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. for real. Right. right. I mean, I don't know if it goes both ways, so they could say whatever they want. Oh, about seriously? Me. Oh, I thought it went both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't talk about them, under. but I think they can talk about me. Yeah, I'm gonna start throwing my doctor under the bus a little bit more. Yo, <laughs> you know? that's crazy. Just make uh, me turn my head and cough way too much. <laughs> He's like, wait, I didn't quite feel it. What was yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's uh, explicit physical therapy. We're gonna get him. Uh, we're gonna get him locked up. I don't um, do any coughing. We right, we don't do that test. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, um, the entrepreneurial part. Uh, congratulations on all that. So, my first question is, um, what inspired? Look, you have some. You know, you had some emotional moments on the show, but it's clear like someone as accomplished in life as you are doesn't. You don't become a winner by accident. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I it takes incredible work ethic yeah. and confidence. So, you know, is there something or someone that inspired you to be great? And like, where did that competitive fire start to burn within you? I think my work ethic is definitely greater than my confidence. So confidence, as you can see from the show, is like somewhere where I, I kind of lack. Like, I'm not always sure when people tell me things about myself. I'm like, mm, I don't quite see that. But let me work towards it and figure out if I can discover that about myself. But I have to see it through the hard work mm -hmm. other than just through like. Right. Know. People are like, you're amazing. And I'm like, am I? Because I think I'm pretty basic. Well, um, you know, when you look at the facts, they don't lie. Yeah, but I come from a long line of like really hardworking women. Like my mom is, a, is really hardworking. My grandmothers were really hardworking. So mm -hmm. just women who were like, I don't need anybody else to help me along my journey. Like, I'm going to show up and I'm going to show them what's up. And then, you know, my my work, my work ethic is going to speak for it. Right. There. And you obviously, just like anyone, you have a choice to to take that upon yourself or you have a choice not to. So um, as a child, was there any like public figure outside of the family that you looked at who you like wanted to be or wanted to be like or emulate their career or anything like that? I mean, I was I was born in Alabama. I was raised in Georgia. Like I didn't come from like a big town or like big a big start. So like, no, like I saw yeah. people on TV, but I didn't see myself in them. Yeah. Or you didn't care to be any of them. It wasn't that I didn't want to be. I just couldn't see the path there. Like right. when you grow up in the middle of nowhere, you're like, you don't see yourself as being a potential 
character on television. That right. just doesn't seem like a path what that's did available you want? to you. What did you want to be when you grow up? I wanted to be either a dance teacher, which I'm not a good dancer, but I love to dance. I wanted to be a dance teacher or a regular teacher. It was like what I wanted to be as a kid kid. Mm -hmm. um, and I think growing up and I wanted to be a doctor and then. What I, you did? Yeah. I mean, I wanted to be a medical doctor and I became a PT. It's, it's the same, but different. Same, same, yeah. but different. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, how'd you get into pageantry? And when did that start? Um, started in college. So that was another thing. Like I watched growing up, everybody watched, I mean, back Kids these days don't know, but back in the nineties, you watched was whatever was on TV. Right, like, right. Yeah. yeah, you had five channels Pageants, and you picked one. Spelling bees, Mister Rogers, like literally, yeah. Price is right. The Price is right. Whatever yeah. was on like the public channels that you'd have to pay for. That's yeah. what we all watched. So I watched Miss America growing up, but I never again saw myself as a Miss America. Um, but when I was in high school, this is a long story. Do you want to hear it? It's yeah, not of course. That long. Okay. All right. So when I was, that's what you're here for. When I was in I high school, I want to know it all. I went to do a college visit at where I ended up going to college, Hampton. Um, my mom came with me. My grandmother came with me. I will say over and over again, those are two of my biggest like influences in life. And I remember that weekend we went to the Miss Hampton pageant. And at the end, I was like, Grandma, like if I come here, I'm going to be Miss Hampton. Um, I wanted to go to UGA at the time. Mm -hmm. Go dogs. I only wanted to go to UGA. I, yeah. I had no like prospect of going to Hampton. That wasn't even on my list, really. But then they offered me a full scholarship. I ended up at Hampton. So Thanksgiving, my junior year of college, my grandmother brought that up to me. And she was like, hey, do you remember you said you were going to do this pageant? And I was like, yes, grandma, I remember. Yeah, don't hold me to that. Yeah, yeah. shut up, grandma. Yeah, shut up, grandma. Eat your turkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah. slap you. Yeah, some days you call me the wrong name, but today you remember what I said four years ago. Like, yeah. this is weird. Um, right. Anyway, love my grandma. She's, I was gonna say, yeah, she gone. sounds unreal. Yeah, she's amazing. Hold up, a grandma that helps you remember your dreams and accomplish them? I love you, grandma. But that's truly what happened. So she kind of helped me too, and I was like, well, I have to be a woman of my word. So if I told my grandma I was going to do a pageant, I'm going to do this pageant. Mm -hmm. So I did the pageant. I won. Um, you won first. Go ahead. First, yeah. first shot. One shot, one kill. What's the deal? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was only one shot. You can only compete for Miss Hampton really? once. Really? Okay. Maybe you can your junior. Maybe you yeah. can do it twice. But that's great. That's but, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So you just, did you, did you like, let me ask you this. What qualities help you in those types of competitions? Um, and, you know, other than just being like comfortable on camera, what ways did pageantry help you on a competition show like Survivor or The Challenge? I will, I think being in pageants both helped and hurt. Okay. So the way in which it hurt me is I feel like I'm like really well media trained. Mm -hmm. So especially on Survivor, people saw none of my personality because I'm very much like they wanted me to come on Survivor and they wanted me to be the pageant girl. So right. I'm going to like, I'm going to show up. I'm going to be the pageant girl. And I was very PC. I like very much colored in between the lines. Um, so in that way it hurts because people don't see your true personality. They see your pageant persona. Mm -hmm. um, but in pageants, we always say that like pageants are one in the interview room. So that's something that the public never sees. But gotcha. the rest, like we do a 10 minute interview with the judges. They're just doing like firing questions at you for 10 minutes. You have to come up with the best answer. So I think in that way, it prepares you because you can talk to any group of strangers. You mm -hmm. can adapt. So if you're like, oh, this guy isn't liking my like, you know, super out there answer. Let me lean a little bit more. Like you can read, it teaches you to read the room. Right. Do you think that helped you in the interview process of the challenges? And maybe I don't know how the survivor interviews are, but like your interviews on the challenge are awesome because you're able to kind of <laughs> you're able to kind of like say a fact whether you have any involvement in it or not. Like um, I'll never forget when you're talking about Chanel, who I know is your girl. Yeah, I'm like, what did I say? I know, no, Chanel's your girl. You're like, yeah, you're kind of doing worse than Michelle. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> Chanel, yeah. Let's not bring that. Chanel's is still upset about that. Well, she's got to. Hey, she's got to perform. <laughs> she knows that. Yeah, I'm sure she knows that. And if she's ever here, I'll tell her that straight up. Yeah. But yeah. yeah so, so did you enjoy like the interview process in the house, or is that kind of like tedious? Uh, I mean, I didn't mind it. So here's the one thing about the interview, and I used to tell people this all the time. They'd be like, "Why are you taking so long to get ready?" I'm like, "The interviews are the one time I know I'm going to be on camera. So why wouldn't I?" Pull it together. Mm -hmm. So I, feel I mean, like everyone takes their time to get ready for interviews, though. Some people, I mean, like, men not so much. Some like people, women. A lot of the women get mad if their interviews before a certain time because they need hours to get ready. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm like, put me on at nine a.m. Yeah, on which is so, and that would piss us Roll off too. Out of bed, like, I have the lines on my face yeah. still, and the hair is all sticking up on one side. I'm like, let's do this. Yeah, book all the men in the morning. Let us all do the afternoon because we need hours to get ready. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing, though. It takes people forever because that you're gonna be on TV. Mm -hmm. And 
unless you're me, you care what you look <laughs> you like. You care. Yeah, right. yeah. And we could look crazy in the challenges. Like, you can't control that. Like, no. yeah, when yeah. you're swimming through frigid water, like, you can control what you look like. Or just puking your guts out with, like, the boogers flying off your face. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. That those, never looks Those good. moments, too. Those are the ones that become gifts. The ones where you're, like, looking good, those never become the ones that people repost. It's oh, the ones where you have, like, snot coming out of your face. I know. There's yeah. a, there's a screenshot. There's a really nice screenshot of you in the final with the alliances thing. And you're just holding it. You know, it's a good little smile from you. What's happening here? During the spelling. During the spelling. Oh, right now, the spelling. Yeah, so, yeah, no, yeah. they get, they okay. get you. They get, okay. look, you know, they, they, they do what they can. But I know what you mean. You want to make sure you're prepared mentally, you know, the way you look. You mentioned so. a full scholarship to college. What was yeah. that for? Wait, did I say that? I, maybe I did. Just yeah. academic. Oh, yeah. Academic you did. Oh. Yeah. That's 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 impressive because to keep that scholarship you have to maintain those grades. Yeah, I mean, so I'm also a nerd. Like we should just say that at baseline. Like I'm I'm an overachiever in everything. You're the girl that sat in the front of the classroom. Not necessarily in the front, but I've already read. Like if if somebody assigns me chapters, I've read all those chapters and I've taken notes on them. And oh, so shit, I don't yeah. really need to pay attention in class because you're just like regurgitating information well, you that I've those, already. I already are you know. one of those people that reminds the teacher like, hey, by the way, this is due today. Not do, but I am, <laughs> I I am known for calling a teacher dumb. Like, I got in trouble, like, in elementary school for that, being like, mm, that's wrong, and you're dumb. Well, we share that in common. Yeah. I'm gonna... I've told a lot of teachers that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah dude. Some of them aren't that smart. Right in high school, got some wrath from the both of us, for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna try to pull something out of you, because I know. So, so why don't you tell everyone what you listen to in the morning? Because this is this might be p- private information, <laughs> it's, but I... It's not private. I mean, it's not just in the morning. It's, like, all day long. All right. Well... I, listen, I listen to NPR. <laughs> Are you familiar with National Public Radio? Oh, I, yeah. yeah. I was just making sure there was. I'm like... Is there a wait, different what? NPR? I was no. thinking, like, is there any rap? Groups like with an like I don't know like yeah NPR <laughs> oh, yeah. is you're actually talking about the radio yeah yeah National Public Radio what else would you listen to in the morning like what else are what what do you listen to me personally um you know I start with some Justin Bieber you know then I salute into some Drake hmm. and then some you know Morgan Wallen hmm. and then, I start with Up First it's okay. the NPR podcast twelve minutes will tell you everything you need to know about what's going on in the world that day. Um, then I'll move on to other podcasts. Like continue to tell me more in depth what's going on in the world. I love it. My point is that you're always learning and bettering yourself or trying to with your time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, well, I don't think I'm at the point in my life where I've like reached the pinnacle. So. Of course not. But you're still making the effort when a lot of us like me, I want to be mindlessly entertained. But this is the difference in the mindset, which I appreciate. And I wanted to highlight. Hmm. Did, you, did you have something? What's your degree in? Health and physical Health and education. Physical. There's a lot of people my with the, uh, physical therapists. You can go in a lot of different directions and then springboard into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your so, undergrad can literally be anything. Yeah. So mm-hmm. education is like a backup in case I didn't right make it to grad school. NPR. My dad listens to NPR. Sometimes. Oh, you don't? I you, I don't. You, I, you I, I listen. Type that did. I like, listen I to talk radio. Common. I listen to a lot of podcasts and talk radio, current events and stuff like that. But I don't listen to like. Nah, I've never listened to NPR. I like. Uh, I like like a lot of stuff. I like breaking to points. Are you familiar with breaking points? No. Okay. All right. Um, We're putting us up on game right now. We're I know these are good podcasts. I know. I'm I looking forward to I everybody was listening. Just to see what they're talking about. I just get a little bit confused with like you can turn on certain news sources and they're telling you one thing, and then you can turn on another news source and they're telling you kind of the same thing, but like a whole different perspective, perspective, yeah. and a different way about it. And so I just you never know what you're it's crazy you don't know what you're what listening you're con- to is if it's true and you have to do you have to go listen to all these other podcasts yep. to put it all together yeah and be like okay who's the liar yeah so you might like breaking points because they're like not affiliated with a larger network so larger those network, are the best ones yeah they obviously just, with the larger yeah. network it comes with political connections so you have to, right it comes yeah. with political you, connections yeah, you, you it comes with sponsorship narrative. influence right. and yeah. all that stuff so like travis kelsey <laughs> right mr pfizer our boy uh <laughs> <laughs> so doing his thing. Yeah, yeah. What? he's doing his thing. Hey, more power to him. Yeah, he's in love. Yeah. <laughs> he's no, but he's focused. He's a businessman. Correct. I, I respect Correct. that. Yeah. Um, who do you think from your USA two season would fare best in a pageant? Ooh, from USA two. I mean, and it might just be because she's top of mind because I just saw her, but Tiffany. Oh, t- Tiffany. Obviously. One of the most dynamic people, like could be in any room i think and, tiffany could have won i think she could have won her season of big brother oh mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think that she sacrificed a win or doing better for the better group of her alliance mm-hmm. the, okay. um, i don't watch big brother but from what i know yeah i yeah. definitely watched that season and i was like i really think she had the best gameplay she just got 
it it was just she just did what was best for her her group yeah. right and cookout. not necessarily best yeah for her. she wanted everyone in the cookout to make it had she just done, done what Tiffany for her yeah I think she would have been top at least top three yeah. maybe top two nice yeah. I can't wait to go back and watch her season because we know uh and uh, X was on your first USA two mm-hmm. or your USA season so I I do want to go back and watch that um. So how did you get your start on reality TV? Was it ever something that you sought you, you sought out, or did it seek, seek you out? I should say. I mean, it sought me. No, out. I feel yeah. like anybody that goes on Survivor, it seeks them. I don't know a lot of people that are like, no food, no showers, no brushing my teeth. Sign me up. No, there's plenty of people. There's a woman on my season who had applied for 13 seasons, and they finally let her on. See, and I, they finally. Let I her wouldn't on. do if I was casting. I'd be like, no. Yeah. You're done. Yeah, yeah. They they kind of like that whole super fan thing at this like that's this a big thing era now, of Survivor. Yeah. They love a super fan. Well, that's fan. the thing on Big Brother too. There's always two or three super fans. Yeah, no, the whole cast is super fans of Survivor. Really? I, I don't I don't care for that. Um, but yeah, it's it's all me. No, out. I like when people come on and they're not privy to television and how it works. Those right. are the best characters. Yeah, yeah. You they know? have no idea the gameplay. They're just flying by the seat of their pants. Yeah. Like it's it's fun to have people who are unpredictable. Right. But they, when there are too many people who are anticipating the next step and it's yeah. like ugh, it's just boring. You guys are too yep. smart. Or people, you know, I'm not a big, I like, like, so reality TV is about like, to me, the way I understand it was, it was brought about, I mean, years ago as a way to present situations to the public that they wouldn't normally see, right? Like putting all these different personalities from all over the country and out of the world in the house, seeing how different views react and then people learn from it. Well, now you have so many people that go onto these shows and they're like, I need to look good. Mm-hmm. I need to get. I need to get Instagram deals. I yeah. got to do all this stuff because there's money involved. Whereas, like, I like. I just like the sloppiness of reality TV. I think that's what makes a good show. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't know, be too prepared. No. Yeah. No. Less prepared. Yeah, but yeah, the less, less prepared. prepared the better. The better. I feel this. I feel the same way. With reality TV. Yeah. So tell us about the story. How did they seek you out? Um, sought you out. So the casting director actually found me on the Miss USA website. So like, I guess that's a practice of his. He like goes to the website, reads people's bios, looks at their photos. Mm-hmm. So he like read my bio, looked at my photo, and then he sent me a Facebook. What's it called? Like message? They yeah. call them? Do they call them DMs on Facebook? It's no, yeah, whatever. Idea, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, essentially a Facebook DM that was just like, hey, I'm a casting director for Survivor. Mm-hmm. And this is the 15, 16, 17. Like, what what year is this? Hmm. This is 2016. Okay. Yeah. So I was wow, like about that's not too to. Long ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it was... not too long ago. It's at not all. too. I mean, it's kind of a long time ago. Gosh. Yes. Yeah. You're in, yeah. you're in your like... early 20s. So, you know, you're. Mid to late. You're early. But thank you. <laughs> yeah. Mid to late at best. Um, but it was an opportunity but yeah, was, that you're like, I was I'll passing take. my Miss USA, my Miss Virginia USA, like, crown. So mm-hmm. I was like, I don't really have anything else going on. Mm-hmm. Let me try to win a million dollars. Yeah, like whatever. I'll I'll give a shot. Mm-hmm. Did you like Survivor? Um, it's a love hate experience. Right. Right. Like yeah. I don't like a final probably. Like yeah. when you're done, you're like that was badass. But in the middle of it, you're like, why am I here? Right. Right. What did like what wrong decision did I make along yeah. the way to end up here starving on an island with right. a bunch of strangers who are lying to me? But like, then you have to remind yourself. Yeah, then you're like, I'm oh, competing wait. for millions exactly, of dollars. So. Exactly. How but lucky am I? In the moment, you're like, this is the worst thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't had kids, but I always like compare it to childbirth. I'm like, I think it's the way moms explain childbirth, where they're like, that was miserable. It was the worst seven, like, labor was the worst 17 hours of my life. And then they have seven kids. And yeah. you're like, okay, well, let's not, let's not be that. There's some reward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's some reward. The joy of having, well, I don't can't, I mean, I have, I have kids, but I yeah. didn't have them. Yeah. But, the way I understand it is like the joy of the child kind of helps you not for helps you forget the pain you just went through is what I'm kind of picking up from Jenna when I, you know, talk about because yeah. she in the middle of it, I'm like, this is she's in a lot of pain. This, this seems miserable. But yeah. then, you know, a couple months after two months after the baby's here, she's like, OK, so then on the next one and I'm just like, wait, I'm still trying to. Right. We're having another. Yeah. Process. Yeah. More power. Wait, know. how many kids do you have at this point? I have two with a third on the way. OK. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It's the best. A lot happens, you know, a lot happens whenever you get married and having so which we know you have on the <laughs> way. When a man loves a woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you explaining the birds and the bees to me. I, I, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is I know you're getting married and that might be in the horizon. So we wish you a happy, happy home. Um thank you. what is one thing you learned about yourself that you didn't previously know while you're on reality TV? What did you learn about yourself? Hmm. 
That concludes the free preview of the Zach Nichols podcast. So go to Patreon and subscribe to see the rest of the shit that we talk. Go do it now.